Hello and welcome to my own devices. You know, summer is almost here and the weather is becoming warm and lovely. So after you finish watching this video, go outside and get some fresh air and exercise. Hey Dave, let's go out. How do you listen to headphones at home? A lot of people I know have wireless Bluetooth earbuds and headphones, which are really convenient and they're fun to use. The sound can be pretty good and acceptable for most people. Now, what about critical headphone listening, where you are pretty much only listening to the music, not doing chores or exercising and stuff? Personally, for that, I prefer wired headphones. Wireless Bluetooth is okay, but I think I can hear the difference and prefer connecting using a wire because I believe it sounds better. Now, besides your mobile phone, what component do you plug your headphones into? Now, we used to plug them into the front of a receiver or integrated amp or preamp, and it usually sounded pretty good as long as the headphone jack could provide enough voltage to play the music to a satisfactory level. A couple of months ago, I decided to explore the possibility of investing in a pair of decent headphones. Also, my wife encouraged me to get some to maintain a more peaceful late night atmosphere in the house. After some research, I realized that an open back design would suit me best. And my research also pointed me in the direction of Sennheiser HD 650s. You know, most everywhere I looked, these were lauded as fantastic sounding, comfortable, well-made classics. And since I had no way to audition them, I bought them based entirely on their reputation, and I have to say, I'm not disappointed. They completely live up to their excellent rep. With this setup of a JVC CD player and a Luxman integrated amp, there's plenty of gain. I mean, this thing will play as loud as you want, no problem. And the sound is actually very nice. It's very dynamic and plenty of bass. And, you know, from what I understand, these models, these vintage models, ran the headphone jack directly off the power amp with just, some, uh, with just a resistor there in the way to drop the power down to a level the headphones can handle. Now, a lot of uh, modern components will often use a dedicated output amp that's just for the headphone jack. And, I think this, this JVC CD player probably has one of those because it has its own headphone jack with a volume control. And it definitely doesn't sound as good. There's a lot less bass, a lot less dynamics. I mean, it gets loud enough when you turn it up to like 10, uh, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. But uh, definitely doesn't sound as nice. So uh, definitely stick with the one inside the amplifier for sure. If a setup like this works for you, that's great, but you'll have to admit these big and heavy components do take up a lot of valuable space on your desk. So what if you don't use CDs and prefer streaming digital music directly from a computer? You could use one of these cables that plugs directly into the mini headphone jack of, of the computer and the other end into the CD or auxiliary input of your receiver or amplifier. And this is not usually a very satisfactory solution for most audio enthusiasts as you are using the DAC inside the computer, which, is, which many consider to be of very low quality. My solution, like many other individuals, is to use an external DAC that plugs into the USB output of the computer. And then the digital to analog processing is performed by a dedicated unit that is designed to sound good, or at least better than the DAC in a computer. Over the past decade or so, compact desktop headphone amplifiers and DACs have become incredibly popular. And I started getting really interested in these components last year, reading and watching many reviews about them. The fact that many models can also make nice little desktop preamps to use with separate amplifiers and speakers also intrigued me. A few weeks ago, the nice people from APOS sent me a couple of interesting products from Topping. 
The A50S is one of their more affordable headphone amps, and the D50S is the matching, or not so matching in this instance, DAC unit. Until fairly recently, I've only tried out a few DAC units, an AudioQuest Dragonfly and a couple of shit Modis. Now the Modi 3 and the AudioQuest Dragonfly Black are budget DACs that are ideal entry level units that also have a reputation for good sound at a very affordable $99. The Modi 3 DAC is a compact unit that is very simple. On the back are the three digital inputs, USB, optical, and coaxial, and of course one set of analog outputs that connect to your amplifier. This model is powered by USB rather than a big chunky wall wart. The Topping D50S costs two and a half times more at $249, and it's obvious why that is. You're getting quite a bit more for your investment. The two buttons on the front have more than one function that control and configure its functionality. On the back, there are the usual three digital inputs, USB, optical, and coaxial. Of course, it has a set of RCA analog output jacks. On the right is the Bluetooth antenna and a socket that uses USB to power it up. The build quality really feels top-notch to me. Unlike the Modi 3, this model has Bluetooth, DSD, high-res playback, and an included remote control that gives you functions like on off, mute, input select, and access to the digital filter presets. The best part could be that it controls the volume output, so it works like a simple preamp allowing you to send an analog signal to powered speakers or an amplifier in speakers. No need for a dedicated preamp. After some extended listening sessions, I do believe I prefer the sound of the topping D50S DAC over the shit Modi 3. The primary difference was I felt there was a sense of more space between all the instruments and it presented a lighter and clearer top end. I'm finding that distinguishing the differences in affordable DACs to be a lot of work and it can be difficult to quantify and describe. The D50S and the Modi 3 are not worlds apart, but I did find that I preferred the more refined sound of the topping. The design of the A50S is a rather simple affair with an on-off button that doubles as the gain switch, a standard quarter inch and a 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone jack. Now that's a bit different. Then there's the mini volume knob that may be a little fiddly for someone with bigger fingers. And flipping it around, we find no surprises, just a pair of inputs and outputs and the AC socket that uses a wall wart for power. So how does the modern topping A50S headphone amp compared to a 35 year old Luxman integrated amp? Obviously the size and weight differences are dramatic. The Luxman weighs in at 30 pounds and takes up quite a bit of desk real estate and the topping is tiny in comparison and weighs less than two pounds. I mean to compare these two units as headphone amps is a bit unusual I know. The Luxman is a proper amplifier with tone controls and can accept several inputs, including a turntable. At 100 watts per channel, it can drive most loudspeakers very well. It can also drive these headphones to ear bleeding volumes. I'm serious. I can tolerate at most the nine o'clock volume position. Beyond that, I would do some serious damage to my eardrums and the Sennheisers. I'm certain of that. Also note, Luxman models like this one are currently being listed on eBay for pretty high prices. The topping at $220 is a much simpler and straightforward device designed to do one thing well, power headphones. And with these headphones, it does work better with the gain activated. It drives them to more than an adequate volume level, but not nearly as loud as the Luxman. And that's probably a good thing. Using a 2018 Mac Mini with an Italian-made Spidiff adapter running Amazon HD to the topping D50S DAC as the source, I compared the sound quality between the Luxman and the topping A50S using the Sennheiser headphones.
But after comparing them head to head, I have to give the edge to the topping. The excellent bass frequency reproduction was similar on both units, but the most noticeable difference I detected that the topping had a smoother, more transparent sound that pulled out high frequencies and details that the Luxman does not. Vocals were also a little more natural sounding and polished with the topping. Hold on, I'm not done yet. What if I compared the topping A50S to something more modern? Last year I went and bought a shit Valhalla 2 headphone amp. The tubes and the OTL design intrigued me, as well as what I believed was a very reasonable price. Here's a more detailed look at the Valhalla 2. It has that classic aluminum shit case design that's easy to spot. A nice and large volume knob and the headphone jack on the front. Up top are the four tubes, two input and two output. You have to watch out, they get very hot. Around the back you'll find the RCA line input and preamp output jacks and the all important gain switch. And of course the socket for the power cord. You know, it's a pretty hefty feeling unit as well. I'm actually very curious to compare the Valhalla 2 to the A50S. Between the two, the shit is the more expensive model at $349 compared to the topping that is currently $219. The size difference is striking, and the Valhalla 2 has four glowing tubes and a big honking volume knob. Honestly, I really could not hear much of a difference using the Sennheiser headphones. They sounded virtually identical. To be honest, when I bought it, I thought I, I was going to get a tubey kind of sound from the shit Valhalla 2. But it's not really tubey at all. Reading their website later, they do clearly state that the Valhalla 2 does not sound tubey, but rather accurate, neutral, and resolving which it does. The topping is very compact, does not have red hot burning tubes, and is much more understated than the shit. To me, it does sound just as accurate, neutral, and resolving as the Valhalla 2 for a considerably lower price. It does get warm, but there is no possibility of receiving first degree burns from it, and you'll also likely save on electricity as well. So my conclusion between the Topping A50S and the Shit Valhalla 2 is that for considerably less money, the A50S sounds just as good as the, Valhalla, as the Valhalla. Its compact size and cooler operating temperatures is a great advantage. Although tubes are interesting and cool, how Shit decided to implement them in this product gives them, in parts, very little added audible value in the guise of superior sound quality or a tubey tone to the music. To break things down to my sensibilities and perception of value, the topping combo is a fantastic value. The D50S DAC is a very nice sounding model that has useful features such as Bluetooth and remote control, allowing you to use it as a DAC and a simple preamp with a, in a loudspeaker desktop system. The A50S is a nice little headphone amp that sounds fantastic. Better sounding than the old vintage Luxman and just as good as the shit Valhalla 2 for a, as I said before, much lower price. And as a $470 combo, to me, they are an outstanding value and I wouldn't hesitate recommending them to anyone looking for a high-quality, little compact desktop, headphone, and speaker system setup. If you're interested in more info or purchasing the topping product from my video, please use the links in the description below. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, and please don't forget to like the video and subscribe.